In the previous two videos, I've already covered some of the important elements of Outlook. I just wanted to add some extra features, some minor elements, but some important ones that you, you need to know about it. Uh, the first thing is, when I'm writing a new email, and I'm trying to send it to somebody, and whatever the subject. And in the options, I have an option to request a delivery receipt. That means when the server gets the message, I'll get a delivery email back. I can also request a read receipt. That is when the John gets an email, uh, he'll most probably get a prompt asking him that I've requested a receipt back. Do, does he want to allow this? So if he says yes to it, I'll get a reply saying that he's read my message. So that is those options. You may have seen it sometimes in your emails if you ever, somebody's done that to you. Um, you can also, if for example, sometimes you might set an email to a whole bunch of people, but you don't want the reply to come to you. So in that case, in the options, there's this button here called direct replies to. You click it. And in here, you change to the person's email address. Or you can click on select, and then you can choose the, uh, not that one. You can choose a person that you would like the replies to be sent to. So when the people hit the reply button, it will not have your email address in it. It will have Mary's email address so that it will go to her. Okay, so that's the nice little options that is set up here. I can also set a delayed delivery, that is, for some reason, this is a time-sensitive email, so you can say that don't send the email until Monday morning for some reason. You know, you were working at Friday late. You don't want it to go in before Monday 10 o'clock, so it will sit in your outbox. So on the left-hand side, you see there is an outbox folder here. Outbox is when you don't have an internet email or something happen. It will just sit there waiting for the internet connection so that it will go out when you hit the send and receive button. So again, that's a good option for delay delivery if you wanted to do that. Another option which is very useful, and this is also an exam question, all of these are exam question. Uh, there is this voting option. So I could put a question here and I can tell them, so say the question was, uh, are you okay with dinner? party on April 1. So this is maybe a question, you know, someone's uh, going over dinner party or whatever and you want to get feedback from everybody and then I can set a yes or a no button in it. So that means they will get a email saying, do you want to accept or reject? Are you free or not? So you'll come to know that how many people will be there at the dinner party and uh, or it could be any question and then if you set the replies to Mary, then Mary will get that message. But in here, you can also go to custom because in the yes and no, actually, I can start putting something else. So say, for example, I wanted to ask them what date works for them. So I can choose your April 1, colon, April 2, colon, April 5. So I'm giving them different options so that they can choose from. So they'll get these three drop-down options to choose from. So this is the way the voting options are done. So you usually get this type of a question in an exam where they want you to set up the voting uh, options so that this is set up. When I send it, they'll get that email and then they'll have to accept one of the options to choose which day works for them. So this is a really good way to use the features to save time and had a and under the review tab, you have options to do your spelling check, thesaurus, and they also have some basic translate languages that you can change a few of them. In the format text option, you can change all the text. So in the format text, you can always highlight things and you can change the size of the fonts, whatever else you want it to do. So these can be some basic answers that they can uh, questions they can ask. So I'll just say no to saving it. Okay. Next we'll talk about something about the moving folders and also rules and some quick steps options. So if I wanted to organize my inbox I can move the messages to one of these folders. I can even drag it if I want it. I can just drag it and drop it on those folders as I wanted it. 
if you wanted to create new folders if you go to the folder tab on the top and then you can click on new and then you can give it a name so I can say I'll give it my name and then I can choose whether I want it part of inbox or do I want it in line with the test so that the folder will come up here somewhere rather than within inbox if I click OK so now we see the folder is there and I can even drag it high or low wherever I wanted it so you can rearrange this and you can also drag some if you had a lots of folders you can drag some of them into your favorite folder section right here on the top so if you had lots of email mess emails that you were using outlook to check you can do this so that's the new folder option and then you can drag it and even in the home when you go to move you go to other folder you get the same window here and you can use this to create a new folder and I can give it the same name Amir but put it under the folder inbox so there it is and you can move it around so very handy and you can just drag the emails and move it or right click always remember right click in the exams too right click works so you can choose to print it you can choose to uh, move it to whatever folder you want you can also do follow-ups and you can also delete it or you can double click on a message and you'll be able to print it from the file button and there's the print option uh, next thing I want to talk about is the rules button the, the rules are very useful uh, to create because uh, say you wanted to take some email that was coming from your boss or from a colleague and you wanted to automatically put in a folder so I can say that you know I want to create a rule and I can say if it's coming from Amir I want it to be done something to it so you can set those type of a rule I can say move it to the folder and I can say move it to the folder Amir and I click OK and I click OK and there's a lot of different settings you can use you can say if the subject contains something move it to somewhere else or they say play a sound or something or I can move it to some other folder and I click OK the rule has been created do you want to run this rule now so if I click that and I click OK it will move all of those messages in that folder so if I click on Amir so the messages have been moved in here because it acted on my folder so that's a very handy thing and you can also create all kind of rules so if I go to rules manage rules and alerts you can also create rules from here I can click on new rule and this will give me more options to manage so just to show it to you again I clicked on rules manage rules rather than going to create manage rules and alerts I click on new and now I can say move messages from someone move with a specific word so you just click on next 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 and keep on answering the questions and then you can choose what specific words and then you go on to the next step and it will ask you to put the specific word in there so rules and you'll get some exam questions of it in some places and you can click on any of the rules and you can run the rule anytime you wanted it you can always delete it so those are the rules options again it helps you to get your jobs done faster and automi automatically get things done rather than doing things manually uh, the quick steps is very useful because you can create your own buttons so for example I wanted I was emailing my manager a lot I can click on the to manager button and I can put the person's email address here and save it so that every time I click on to manager it automatically has that in there okay. so it's already set there um, I can also use the team email so then I can put it as one of the test accounts so that whenever I click on team email it will automatically have them in the TO section so this is very useful and you can also choose the reply and delete that means I want to reply and as soon as I hit the reply and send it delete that original message and you can go to the quick steps more option these symbols stand for more and you can add your own here other quick steps in here you can create duplicates and then put something else to it so the quick steps are also very useful 
And the last thing I want to talk about in this video is about templates. Uh, so sometimes, you know, you want to have a message created with the certain words that you want to use all the time. So you can create a new email and you don't know who you're going to send to, but say you're going to have um, a mess title. So appointment notice. And then here you type your message. And you can put things like, you know, you are appointed to whatever. So it could be a lot of things. And then you just leave some words where you're going to type the person's name in there. Now, once you have this, you want to save it as a template. So I click on File, Save As. And there is a name there. So you can give it a meaningful name. And from the drop-down button for Save As Type, I'm going to choose Outlook Template. And um, it will save it as a template. So that next time I can open this template so I don't have to have all the words there. I just have to put the person's email address and maybe the names if they need to be changed in the message. And I'll close this. And I don't need to save this. I'll say no to it. And when I want to write a message using that template, I go to New Items, More Items, and then I click Choose From. And I'll say I want to choose look in out and use templates in file system. And there is my appointment notice. And I can open it or double click on it. And there it is. So then I can just continue on. So this will also help me to make it a little easy. I don't know why the signatures came up twice, uh, but you can always delete them. You can do that. So again, another way to get your jobs done faster by creating templates. And I just remember two minor things about contacts. So say I got an email from somebody, I can right click on it and I can add it to Outlook contacts. So I don't have to do anything. It will be added very easily. And uh, if you had contact list in your email or you know in your Gmail or Hotmail and you want it to incorporate it in your Outlook, you can import it. So when you go to Gmail in your contacts or your Hotmail, you'll be able to export your contact list. And from Outlook, you go to File, Open and Export, and then choose the Import Export option. And then you tell it that I want to import from another file. You click Next. And then it usually will save your contacts files in a comma separated value CSV format. Click Next. Now browse to where you saved that file in your computer and then just open it and it will allow you to add your contacts to your Outlook very quickly. And you can choose whether you want to create duplicates if you already had contacts. So I hope in this three video uh, you got a really good sense of Outlook 2013 and also if you know all these things, you can easily pass the test and uh, I'll see if I need it. I'll make a separate video just talking about exam questions. Thanks for watching. Not that one. You can choose a person that you would like the replies to be sent to. So when the people hit the reply button, it will not have your email address in it. It will have Mary's email address so that it will go to her. Okay, So that's the nice little options that is set up here. I can also set a delayed delivery. That is, for some reason, this is a time-sensitive email. So you can say that if you somebody's done that to you. Um, you can also, if for example, sometimes you might set a email to a whole bunch of people, but you don't want the reply to come to you. So in that case, in the options, there's this button here called direct replies to. You click it, and in here, you change to the person's email address or you can click on select and then you can choose the uh, that means when the server gets the message I'll get a delivery email back I can also request a read receipt that is when the John gets an email uh, he'll most probably get a prompt asking him that I've requested a receipt back do does he want to allow this so if he says yes to it I'll get a reply saying that he's read my message so that is those options. You may have seen it sometimes in your emails. Don't send the email until Monday morning for some reason. You know, you were working at Friday late. You don't want it to go in before Monday 10 o'clock. So it will sit in your outbox. So on the left hand side, you see there is an outbox folder here. 
outboxes when you don't have an internet email or something happen it will just sit there waiting for the internet connection so that it will go out when you hit the send and receive button in the previous two videos I've already covered some of the important elements of Outlook I just wanted to add some extra features some minor elements but some important ones that you, you need to know about it uh, the first thing is when I'm writing a new email and I'm trying to send it to somebody and whatever the subject and in the options I have an option to request a delivery receipt 